The U.S. Central Command says more Iraqi soldiers are surrendering. That report coming from commanders in the field, although at this point they don't have any exact numbers. Joining us now from New York to break down all these latest developments and what we may see in the next few hours is MSNBC analyst, retired Navy Vice Admiral Dennis McGinn. Good to see you. Thanks very much for joining us. Good morning, Chris. You know, let me start with the uh, first question that uh, John asked the general because a lot of attention focused today on the fact that this war did not start the way it was intended to, that after George Tenet went to the White House and said, we think we've got a beat on Saddam Hussein and his inner circle, the decision was made to drop that huge bunker buster bomb. Uh, what do you think is going on now? What do you make of this videotape supposedly of Saddam Hussein? Well, first of all, I think it was a target of opportunity that was uh, cause for launching a contingency strike. We probably had plans in place to take down command and control, communications, air defense nodes, and uh, some of those strikes may have been rerouted as this intelligence came in about the potential for a leadership target. We uh, understand that uh, Jeff Hoon, the defense minister of uh, England, is now uh, speaking at the House of Commons. If you can uh, stay with us for a minute, Vice Admiral, we just want to get a sense of what he's saying because he's going to talk about the military operations. The House will be aware of reports of a number of Iraqi missile attacks against Kuwait. These, these incidents are being investigated by personnel with appropriate skills and the necessary protection. There are no reported casualties so far. But I'm afraid there is nothing more I can confirm to the House at this stage. I would like to draw the attention of the House to two particular points. First, that coalition forces will take every possible care to minimize civilian casualties or damage to civilian infrastructure. And whilst the coalition will use modern weapons, which are more accurate than ever, we can never, unfortunately, entirely exclude the possibility of civilian casualties, tragic though these always are. However, people should treat with caution Iraq's claims of civilian casualties. The Iraqi people are not our enemies, and we are determined to do all we can to help them build the better future they deserve. Second, I would caution the House against suggestions that this campaign will be over in a very short time. We all certainly hope that offensive operations will be over quickly, but we should not underestimate the risks and difficulties that we may face against a regime that is the embodiment of absolute ruthlessness with an utter disregard for human life. Turning now to the United Kingdom's armed forces, I have set out in successive statements the forces we have prepared for this purpose. We have deployed a substantial naval force of 29 Royal Navy and Royal Fleet Auxiliary vessels, including the aircraft carrier HMS Art Royal and the helicopter carrier HMS Ocean. A land force led by... We want to go now to Kuwait City and NBC's Don Teague, where the uh, air raid sirens have come on again and his gas mask is back on. Don, what do you know? Okay, let's hold for just a second. We're going to listen. Did that sound like a uh, did that sound like a rocket of some sort? I don't know. I, I heard what you heard. Okay. Well, let me tell you, John, what just happened here. The um, air raid sirens uh, were going until about 30 seconds before you tossed to us. They stopped right as you came to us. We all put our masks on, and then we were just hearing what sounds like some sort of uh, missile. It could have been a uh, incoming, it could have been outgoing. We've heard the Patriots launched from here today. Uh, it's something behind the camera area, but we can't see anything of what happened. So, uh, you know, right now, for precaution's sake, we're uh, staying masked up because they haven't given an all clear here. But uh, clearly, uh, something incoming here to Kuwait City again. And I can also tell you, John, that in the last uh, 20 minutes or so, U.S. military confirming that it was indeed two incoming missiles earlier today that were shot down. One of them shot down 12.51 Kuwait time, the other one at uh, 1.25 in the afternoon Kuwait time. Those were both intercepted according to the military by Patriot missiles and shot down. They're not saying whether those were Al Samud, whether they were Scuds at this point, or they're just saying a ballistic inbound missile from Iraq. So. Uh, that's what we know right now, John. All right, this has been a couple, three hours now that you've been going through this. Tell me what it's been like this morning to have to endure these air raids and to keep putting on and taking off the gas mask. Well, you know, it's sort of frustrating. Uh, we're, you know, we're just listening again for the sound of those uh, outgoing sure. uh, missiles. Uh, you, you know, it's frustrating because obviously we're trying to uh, do the, the right thing as far as the safety for everyone here. I'm standing on the roof of a building and uh, I can probably count 
uh, a dozen and a half people, all journalists generally, all with masks on and doing what they can. Uh, it's a precaution, one that we hope isn't necessary, but uh, it's one that we're going through uh, what has now become every hour or so as these uh, air raid sirens go off here in Kuwait City. Don, uh, if your photographer can do this, and I don't know whether he's got enough room, but uh, could, could he widen out a little bit and maybe show us around and you can tell us more about what's going on on the streets down below as this has gone on through the day? It, uh, obviously sure. creepy sure, for I'll the start people over around the... there. Yeah, um, you, if you can forgive some of the paraphernalia from our set here, basically, but uh, you're looking at uh, downtown Kuwait, uh, you can see there are still some cars out driving around and there are people out walking around. We've made this point a couple of times today that most of the citizens here are uh, unprepared as far as walking around this city with any sort of chemical or biological protection and uh, that's what's happening right now. You can see that there's not a lot of traffic, not a lot of people on foot and ordinarily it would be very, very busy this time of day. I don't know how well we can uh, come over this way and, and probably not see the building that's still under construction just next to us, but I, I see construction workers riding uh, elevators and buckets up and down that building right now, so it's sort of this uh, silly feeling, right? We're here wearing these masks because we have them. People who have no choice are saying, well, what can we do? So they go about their life and they're pouring concrete next door. Uh, I don't know what the answer is to that. It's uh, very strange stuff. Uh, Don, uh, take care, and we'll get back to you in a little while. Don Teague reporting from Kuwait okay, City John. as he continues to uh, bring us the information there. And this is one of these things that we've been watching since early this morning when we first had these air raids. We, we, in fact, Chris, we, we first thought that this was a test, that the air raid sirens that were going off in Kuwait City were a test. But then it happened over and over and over again. And then we realized that the Scud missiles had been launched from Iraq on U.S. troops, toward U.S. troops in Kuwait, and then that the Patriot missiles had at least taken out two of them.